You are now listening to Shia, the Era of Our Female-Led Society, a dramatic fiction audiobook series written by Tierica the Oracle, presented by FemaleLedSociety.org. Chapter 3 I can't waste time dwelling on threats from a man, Gloria reminds herself as she unrobes for her evening massage. The man she thought was just a figment of her imagination had breached her security during the most important meeting of the year and shot and killed the head of the security team who was standing inches away from her. This man, who called himself Gavin, promised to destroy everything she had built. Yet, Glory trained herself not to worry. Even before she became Shia Supreme and reorganized our society, she had gone through so many hard times that she lived in a state of constant anxiety, wondering if things would work themselves out. After several years of turmoil, she looked back and realized that her worry never helped the situation, and regardless of how much she stressed herself, things always worked out. Glory is completely naked, standing in front of the massage table, staring at a tropical painting on the wall. Her eyes are glazed over, lost in her thoughts. Worrying is a waste of time. It makes you feel like you're doing something when you have run out of options, Glory reminds herself, speaking aloud. If Galvin is going to prove himself to be powerful enough to disrupt this society, let him try. Ma'am, a voice interrupts her. She breaks her gaze and looks to her left. It is Omari and Kingston, her private attendants, waiting to begin her daily massage. Glory smiles at the two men who immediately remove their shirts, revealing sculpted chests. They are now only wearing basketball shorts and sandals, just the way she likes them. Instead of lying down on the table to begin her massage, Glory is feeling silly, so she sits down instead. She motions for the men to come closer, and they do, grinning sheepishly while looking down at the floor. She extends her hand and Omari produces a tube of oil. He pours a small portion into her palm and she rubs both hands together. She pulls him closer to stand in between her open legs. She closes her eyes as both of her hands find his chest, exploring, lingering, pinching, rubbing. (laughs) Glory remembers when she chose them to be her attendants. Attendants are men who have chosen to devote themselves to the service of women in leadership positions. They are not paid to be in this position. It's strictly a volunteer act, yet they become a part of the woman's household, and she is responsible for their well-being, housing, and health for as long as she wants to have them. Attendants go through a rigorous six-month training program before they can be approved to be interviewed for a position with a leader. They undergo background checks. Their families and friends are interviewed to be sure they have no aggression issues. They undergo surveillance as well to learn their habits, interests, and motives. These men have to pass a strict clearance check before they can begin training since they may be placed in the households of our society's greatest leaders. Once cleared, they begin training at their expense. They learn first aid, how to serve, skills like massage, culinary training, love making, and other ways they can make a woman's life easier, easier and more pleasurable. Once an attendant is placed in a woman's household, there is no limit to what can be required of them. Attendance exists for the woman's satisfaction, and in any way she asks, he must satisfy. Several times a year, newly trained attendants show off their service skills during champagne parties, a women's only event where women in leadership are invited to interview potential attendants. Attendants do have a say in which households they are assigned. If they absolutely do not wish to serve a particular woman, they may decline. An attendant will only serve eagerly if he really wants to be there, and we respect that. They also have the freedom to approach women during the champagne parties. If they see a woman they would like to serve, they are encouraged to introduce themselves and share their areas of expertise. Well, Glory attended a champagne party and was simply just enjoying the scenery when she heard a voice calling out to her. Madam Shia, the male voice says. She turns to her right, already giggly from the bubbly. 
She raises her eyebrow at the brown-skinned man who has the audacity to approach her. Does she a supreme? Yes, she dares him. He doesn't miss a beat. My name is Omari, madam. He introduces himself. I became an attendant because I admired you. I'm here because I wanted to meet you. I want you to choose me to serve you. Your specialties, she inquires. Love making, madam, he replies and grins down at the floor. I also pride myself on keeping a clean home and giving the best body rubs you will ever have. These hands are healing. <laughs> Glory laughs. His words seem almost scripted. Aren't you the confident one? What were you doing before you started training? She asks. I was a barber for 20 years, madam. Then I saw you making an announcement earlier this year and I couldn't help myself. I decided that it's time to make my biggest dream come true. Very nice, Omari, Glory says with a giggle. I just came to the party to look, though. I just came to look. You can touch, too, Omari challenges her. That's enough, she silences him. Go away. Thank you, madam, Omari whispers before bowing and walking towards the exit. Glory takes a sip of her champagne. She calls out to her assistant, Cameron, better known as her keeper. Send for Amari, she tells him. Have him wait in my chambers. Yes, ma'am, Cameron says. Yes, that's how it all began. That night she sampled Omari's skills and found him to be outstanding. So she kept him. She added Kingston to the team as well, simply because she loves the excited energy of new attendants. She usually changes attendants every few years, but these two have been around for longer than usual. She loves them, and they know it too. Back to the lecture at hand. Omari turns on her favorite music while Kingston lights incense, and she settles down to replenish herself with the loving touch of men who she trusts adores her. This part of her daily ritual is vital. As the two men oil, oil, her, oil her body, touching, teasing, rubbing, fondling, all of her anxieties melt away. We love you, Glory, they whisper to her once, twice, three times. We love you, Glory. Mm-hmm, she replies and falls fast asleep. She is awakened by the sound of Cameron's voice. Ma'am, ma'am, I have urgent news. She blinks and raises her head. Omari and Kingston have left to allow her to rest. What is it, Cameron? It's, it's she a Magdalene. Miss, Miss Brainy? Her keeper called. She has passed away. Glory sits so quickly. How? They said it was an aneurysm. Everyone is waiting for your instructions. No one knows yet. She takes a deep breath and sheds a tear for her friend. Cameron passes her her robe and she stands up to receive it. Shia Magdalene was one of the first Shias to share the title with her, just after the shift. She helped shape the new economy, create a new economic system, and oversee its impl implementation. After her 10-year term, she retired to spend time with her family. When the next 10-year term ended, Gloria invited her back as a Shia to lead Sora America, and she accepted Shia Magdalene was often called brainy because there is no problem she cannot propose a solution for. You can have her keeper begin the transition procedures, Glory says. I will make the formal announcement tomorrow morning. Yes, ma'am. Rain is already two miles into her four-mile cycle at the gym when she receives a special alert that signifies an important announcement from the Shia Supreme. She stops cycling and presses her wristband to view the announcement. The Shia Supreme is dressed in a white gown and has a firm but pleasant expression on her face. Good morning, my favorite citizens. I trust that you are all prospering and eager to begin your day. This morning I must share that our beloved Shia Magdalene of Sur America has transitioned. We all loved her dearly and appreciate her immeasurable service to our society. We would like to thank her husband and children for allowing us to share in her love and wisdom. We thank you for the gift of such an amazing woman. 
Shia Magdalene's celebration of life will commence at 12 noon. At this time, all general citizens are dismissed from work duties to view it live. Please send tributes during the program. She will be laid to rest tomorrow morning. Thank you all for your attention and for your love. The screen is black and rain can't believe her ears. She remembers Shia Magdalene because she took a special interest in her during her training to engage as an aristocrat. She shared tips for staff management and even introduced Rain to her son to set up a date. Rain disengages from the bicycle and plops down on the floor against the wall. Tears stream from her eyes and she allows it. She is sad, but she also believes the message taught by Shia Glory. She teaches that death is a transition and a reward. It is not an ending. She teaches that all transitions are in perfect timing and should never be viewed as bad. She teaches that we celebrate transitions because it is natural and ultimately one of the grand surprises of life. I love you, Shia Magdalene, Rain whispers. She stands up to head home and happily participate in her celebration of life.